Hello everyone, welcome back to class. You are watching Anime Academy Summer School. This semester, we are talking about the studios that bring your favorite anime to life. I am Elliot Trinidad, and today's session is on Studio Doga Kobo. Anime studios gain a name for themselves among fans when they receive lead credit for a show that makes it big. When you see a studio's name plastered on the opening of your favorite anime week to week, it's hard not to take notice. But anime is very rarely the product of one studio alone. There are currently hundreds of animation studios in this industry contributing important tasks such as background art or special effects, and notably, the task of handling large chunks of individual episodes so that the main staff can focus on the most crucial parts. When we think of the word outsourcing, we often assume labor that is subcontracted overseas. But the truth is that almost every anime these days outsources most of the show to other animation studios within Japan too. Studio Doga Kobo may not have crossed any anime fan's mind until perhaps 2007 when they produced the romantic drama called Myself Yourself. But they have a much longer, deeper history of subcontract work. About 44 years of it, in fact. Doga Kobo actually predates Studio Ghibli by quite a bit, and was trusted by Ghibli founders Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takahata, who had both called upon Doga Kobo to assist in their own projects. Doga Kobo's reliability stood the test of time, too. If you've ever watched Gurren Lagann, it might amuse you to learn that Doga Kobo was entrusted with producing Simone and Nia's first meeting, an extremely memorable moment in the series. Doga Kobo earned their role on such noteworthy projects over the years, thanks in large part to the reputation of its founders. Doga Kobo was established by Hideo Furusawa, an artist with decades of experience and with skills honed from working under Toei Animation. Furusawa's credits include Shonen Sarutobe Sasuke in 1959 and Wanpaku Oji in 1963. With business partner Megumu Ishiguro, they finally founded Doga Kobo in 1973. Their name may not be particularly inspiring, Doga Kobo kind of literally means the video studio, but they've served as the backbone of the industry for decades. But like I mentioned, few fans would have even heard of them until maybe the past decade. That's because in 2006, Doga Kobo saw a new company president, a deal under the huge media corporation TYO Group, and most importantly, a new direction for their animation studio, to produce anime titles of their own. Doga Kobo's early titles focus on adaptations of visual novels, starting with Memories Off and Myself Yourself, and then a couple years later with Koihime Muso and Eleven Eyes. However, it it wasn't until 2011 when Doga Kobo hit upon the style of anime that would soon become their bread and butter, the cute and lighthearted comedy. Yuru Yuri was a sure success that earned a second season with its sharp and hilarious comedic timing, under director Masahiko Ota and writer Takashi Aoshima. It's likely that this cemented a reputation for cute comedies, as they were soon sought out to produce adaptations of a lot of successful manga, such as Lovely Muko, Love Lab, Gabriel Dropout, Gekan Shoujo Nozaki-kun, and most popularly, Umaru-chan. Maybe you recognize some of them, even if you've never even watched the anime themselves. Doga Kobo's moe comedies are extremely ripe for animated gifs and reaction pics online. It's been a couple of years and I still see people post gifs of Umaru-chan. There is a lot of consistency in both the snappy jokes and the lively animation that you should be able to notice across their comedies, and that really shows the strength of Doga Kobo's talented staff. Part of their recent success has been attributed to the leeway given to young animators. Most studios have been around as long as Doga Kobo typically only allow their veteran animators to handle these crucial scenes, but here there's reportedly both an eye for talent and a trust in those abilities. The studio's talent, young and old, have allowed them to produce more original series such as the sci-fi tearjerker Plastic Memories and the trading card game franchise Luck and Logic. This strategy of fresh talent seems to have paid off, with young artists having helped to elevate Doga Kobo to a very prominent name in the industry. Their latest hit is New Game, a workplace comedy about young women who face the highs and lows of developing video games. And appropriately, it is also about young creators proving themselves in an entertainment industry. New Game's second season recently finished simulcasting on Crunchyroll, so now is a good time as any to dive into the wonderful work of Studio Doga Kobo. Do you have a favorite Doga Kobo anime? Let us know in the comment section below and tweet your answers to us at Crunchyroll using the hashtag Anime Academy. Also, don't forget to tell us what studio you want to learn about next. If you learned something today, do give our video a big like and subscribe to this channel to keep that anime brain sharp. And share this video to spread that know-how with your friends too. So hey, thank you for watching. Class is dismissed. I will see you all next time on Anime Academy.